Hey, welcome back. We're going to continue learning a little bit about text files in this Game Maker video lesson here. Um, what we're going to do this time is just show you a technique that we looked at when we were dealing with INI files, and that's using lists and maps within the text file. Now, I've written all the code out, and I really do assume you're familiar with lists and maps from the INI file videos that you've previously watched, or this may go a little bit over your head. Uh, so here we go. We've been looking at these text files recently, right? And seeing how you can save information in them, you know, piece by piece, line by line. One nice thing you can do when you have a lot of data to dump in there, and you don't want to use an INI file because there's, you know, a lot of data, is what you can do is, is you can basically dump an entire list or grid or map structure into a text file. And even though it's a big chunk of text you're dumping in, it actually still reads out just fine. So let's take a peek. What I've done here in my program is I have two lists, or I should say a list and a map. One list is keeping track of stats, and then one list that you've seen before is the, or sorry, map, is inventory. Now, these are sort of automatically filled for me uh, already in the program. Uh, and so let's just see what happens when the person hits save and how I save the info in there into the grid. So here's my save list script. And here's what I do. I take that list called stats, I clear it out, and I'm going to add four pieces of information to it. So I add the difficulty, the difficulty text, points, and HP. These are variables already created in my uh, global object. Now what I want to do is, what we did with the INI files and lists, is you want to use that DS list write script, give it the list, and it's going to basically take that list structure and it's going to form one single long string out of it. So it doesn't matter how many items you have in there, you're going to get this massive string back okay, with all the data. I'm going to do a show message so you can see that string. Now I do the exact same thing with my inventory map. Uh, my inventory map is keeping track of pears and apples and burgers. You can go hunt that down in this project code if you want from the website. But you'll see here, that map has actually already been filled for me. I do the same command, DS map right. I give it that map, and it sends me back that whole map as a single string, and I'll print that out for you. Now that I have those two strings, what I do is I basically just open up a text file for writing, and I just write those two strings in. So write string. I'd write the list of string string, so that's the entire list converted to a string. That should be one line in the text file. And then I do a write line, right, to jump to a new line in the text file. And then I write the map as string. So the entire map's been written in one line in the text file. And I write one more, or I go to a new line, and then I just close the file. Now this line actually isn't really needed since it is the end of the file. So I could just take it out of there, right? But remember to close your file. Now, what does that make? Well, when I give it a run here, and I'll just give it a quick run, then we'll go peek at the file that it just made. So remember, I hit the R key, randomizes some data for me. This is the stuff put in the list. This is the stuff that's already being held in the map. I hit save. That's the list converted to a string. And that's the map converted to a string. Now, like I said before, if you didn't watch the list and map video with INI files, I go over that much more slowly, right, in detail. Okay, I assume you know this stuff. I hit OK, and output file has been saved in info.txt. Here's info.txt. So when we look at info.txt, you sort of go, oh, this guy lied to me. This isn't two lines. But you know what? It actually is, because if you stretch this out, it's basically two lines. Okay, right here, there's an enter key, and that enter key that's been saved to the file was saved there when I used the line, do, 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 right here, file text write line. That's what sort of hit the enter key in writing the file. And so when you look at this, it is two lines. Even if you have a huge list, and this thing goes on and on and on and on, it may end up looking like this, that it's multi-line, but you know, it is just one line for the list and one line for the map. And so when we go to read it now in our read script, this should be a really easy read. 
I just read one string. It's going to be a big one. And I'll convert it back to a list and get the data out. And then I'll read one line. That's my map. And I'll send that back into a map. And then I can get my data out. So let's take a peek at that. When I go to do the load lists that's provided in here, basically open the file, info.txt, make two variables, list is string, map is string. Each one gets one line out of the text file. So file text read string, reads the string, read line will take me down to the next line, and then another read string to get the map data. And then I close my file. So really the file stuff is pretty easy. The real work here is really pulling the variables out. This is admittedly a little bit of a sloppy example of when you would do this. Um, I tried to keep it just short, right? So it makes sense. But usually this is powerful when you have like huge lists and maps and grids, right? This makes it super efficient to do. But now that I have my two strings, I need to get them back into the original game maker list and map structures. And that command was ds list read. I give it the name of that list I already had made in my program called global.stats. And I give it the string. Poof, that string's turned into that list. Same thing with ds map read. I give it the string. I give it where I want that string uh, put into global inventory. And now my inventory is filled up. Now, just to see that we can get the information out of here, I just do some simple list and map commands. So that variable uh, global dot difficulty and points and hit points, I just read it out of the slots out of my stats lists with the find value script. So slot 0, 1, 2, 3, that was the order I put stuff in the list. That's the order I take it out. I've got my variables. Um, map probably would have been better for this task, but I just did the list here just to make a point. You could do it with lists, but the map you can see reads a bit nicer. Hey map, find the value from the inventory map, find the apples value, right? This is the key and it sends me back the number, you know, seven global dot apples equals seven, right? And I do the same for burgers and pears. And when you actually see this working on the screen, it actually works really nice. You can see here if I hit the R key a couple times, that's random values. Remember them. I hit save. It saves the file here. And now let's just get some other random values with the R key. And now I'll hit load. And it's loaded up what I saved. All right, so it's a nice example how to do lists and stuff. And it's definitely good for massive data storage using the lists and the maps in your text file. Just remember what order you're putting them in, right? So you're reading the right lines. Hopefully that's useful in your games. Thanks for checking that out. And uh, the next video is going to be about loading a level up and basically, you know, where the monsters go, X and Y positions and what type of monsters and where to put them. But this time reading from a text file. Thanks for watching.